Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over. You might remember my next guest from a recent appearance in which she interviewed me about the second book in my Will Wilder adventure series. But tonight, the spotlight is on her. She's a blogger and editor of CatholicMom.com, as well as the author of the Chime Travelers series for kids. I sat down with her to discuss storytelling, the differences and the similarities of writing for kids and adults. Here's my interview with Lisa Hendy. Lisa, I want to start with CatholicMom.com, which you are so known for. I mean, you're the blogger extraordinaire out there. How did this start? You started the site when you were still a stay-at-home mom. In the year 2000, as an answer wow. to uh, John Paul the Great's call to the new evangelization, but really because I was a mom of a second grader, I went to his religious education sacrament prep and was yeah. told by his second grade teacher, you are the primary faith formator of your child. And so mm -hmm. for whatever reason, instead of going and buying the catechism, I thought, I'm going to make a website and learn about how to do this properly. So, wow. so it was kind of, uh, at the time, it was sort of a help me and let's help each other exactly. sort of site. Exactly. A desire to find a community of other mothers who I knew were like me that, you know, I'd grown up a cradle Catholic, yet mm -hmm. there was so much to learn in order to share the faith with my children. I didn't start it because I had all the answers. I was, yeah. I was seeking community. And, and it's still what we seek on the who site. Who populates the site today? Who visits? We are so blessed. Um, this last year we had visitors from over 170 countries around the mm. world. Our writing, uh, writing team is all volunteers and that's moms, but also dads, priests, religious, um, college uh -huh. students, and we have over 150 volunteer writers on the site. Unbelievable. So it's a great team effort, and, and, and just that, a team, hopefully if you come now, you won't know it's, it's Lisa's site because it belongs to all of us. Wow. And, and you still run it? Are you still running the site, your yes, editor-in-chief? absolutely, but thank goodness for my uh, on, on the ground uh, editor, Barb Shishkevitz, mm -hmm. who uh, is there when I'm doing fun things like this. There She's there go. to be the mainstay of the site. I love it. Well, tell me now, where did the book thing come from? You've written several books since then. Yes. How I'm did that pop out? I'm so blessed that Ave Maria Press, my publisher, came to me around 2008 with the mm -hmm. idea to um, begin creating some resources for Catholic mothers and asked me, you know, what would you like to write about? And so really at that point we launched a, a partnership that now is an, a book in print with Ave. We have uh, mm. 11 Catholic mom books and growing, and I've written a mm. few of those. And those are books aimed to serve mothers at all different stages of life mm. um, to encourage them in their vocation to motherhood. Mm. There was a particular book, The Grace of Yes, that I, I read um, when it came out. And that book is, I think, so important because the, the, you have a second chapter, the, you know, at the, near the end, you have The Grace <laughs> of No. Right. Tell us about that book, what its, its general idea is and the way it was received. You know, it really looks to emulate Mary's yes. You do this in your own way, Raymond, but a way for us to actually give our yes to what God is calling each of us uniquely to. And mm. my, my idea with this is that if we give that yes every day consistently, that by the very nature of that, we become generous spirits in the world around us. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about financial generosity. I'm talking about um, something even de deeper, which is our yes to being Christ's love to the world around us. Mm -hmm. So an important concept and something I try to commit myself to every now, day. Now, I want to move on to this series yeah. of books, the Chime Travelers mm -hmm. uh, series, C-H-I-M-E Travelers, for those only getting the audio. Um, where did the idea of writing for kids come from? I have a dear devotion to St. Patrick, and um, this story was born in the backyard with my young nephew named Patrick. So we sat on a backyard swing talking to him about what could happen if he could travel in time and meet his patron saint, and it turned into this beautiful series where my brother and sister twins travel in time and meet different saints at, at seminal times in their path to sainthood and mm -hmm. learn from them lessons that they can apply to their ordinary kid problems, things yeah. that are happening in today's modern world. And where, there's a little, there's a device you use throughout all the books where the kids are usually visiting a church or a monastery right. or something, and it is a chime that allows them to travel back in time. It's a rhyme. Initially, uh, the ringing of the Angelus bells. Part of my uh, ho hope with this is to help kids fall in love with many of the wonderful aspects of our church. So bells mm -hmm. are such an, a relevant part of the mass, of liturgies, of yeah. call to prayer. And so it's the, the chiming of bells that gets them to and fro. But they, they can't come back from the chime travel until they've learned a lesson. Mm. What type of research did you, did you uh, undertake to do this? Because writing for children is not 
like writing for adults, <laughs> as I've learned. They're much harsher critics. <laughs> you bet. And more neat. No filter, those little ones. Absolutely not. If they don't like it, they don't pull any punches. Yeah. So obviously diving deeply into the saints' lives, but there are illustrations in the book as well. There are chapter books yeah. aimed at seven to ten-year-olds, but to make the illustrations relevant, a lot of historical research as well. For example, what did you know uh, St. Francis's uh, garb look like at the time that he lived? Not right. what we might see on a holy card, but... Right. Well, what it really looked like. So diving deep into what things looked like, smelled like, felt like. In that how did time. you go about choosing the saints? I mean, St. Clair is here, St. Francis, St. Patrick. Um, uh, I'm missing I'm missing some. Yeah, St. Kateri. Kateri. And then and the Holy five, Family The Holy up. Family at Christmas. And, yeah. you know, really, I mean, Patrick had to be my first. He's my personal patron. I love uh -huh. St. Kateri. Francis and Claire go together. And yeah. then the story of the greatest saints of all, the story of the Holy Family at the Nativity is just, I, it was mm. a beautiful gift for me to write that story. And what have you learned? Because I find you learn so much when you talk to children and spend time with them, particularly after they've read a book or when right. they're working, you know, in the process of reading it. What did you discover as you, you visited schools? I have two messages for the kids. The first is that each of us is a saint in the making, that mm. we're each created and called by God uniquely mm. to be on our path to sainthood. The second is that each of us is a storyteller. So we're all mm. called with our own gifts to tell the greatest story of all, which is the story of God's love for us. And mm. the more I talk to kids about that, the more convinced I am myself that I'm just getting started with this. So yeah. it's really real fun. Do you want to continue the series, will you? I'd love to, if not this series, than other um, projects for kids because I think there's a great need for great uh, literature. I hate to call this literature. Hopefully it's on the path to being that, but yeah. um, a real need to call our kids to the gift of reading and, and mm -hmm. to an understanding of the, their faith through the prism of art. So yeah. it's a blessing to be a part of that process. How, how long does it take you to write one of these books? Um, about, I'd say three months. So a month is spent maybe pondering, staring off into space, praying, mm -hmm. researching, and then two months of active craziness where <laughs> I'm hearing voices in my head and mm -hmm. transcribing their dialogue and really, you know, working out story issues. The issue of time travel as of, you know, uh, fantasy, what yeah. you deal in, yeah. you know, creates um, interesting situations that we have to work our way through. Yeah, so. you have to create rules exactly. and try to stick to them. You can create the rules, but then you have to live by them. That's right. the hard part. <laughs> Developing a mythology that um, can go on and on. So it, kids who have read the stories notice that I have little hints about potential future stories, flashbacks, uh. flash forwards. Word, so. mm. Did you, is there, when you decided to have two characters, why two? Why just the brother and sister? So the story started off with Patrick, and yeah, you know, it's so natural for me to have Patrick and Katie, um, twins, fraternal twins, who kind of complement each other in, yeah. in their strengths and weaknesses. And initially, the two twins are kind of alternating the stories. They're both present in each, but their, mm. their relationship to the saints um, alternates. And then in book five, we see them together chime traveling for the first time. Mm, yeah, that's right. That's the first time they yeah. actually go as, as a yeah. Unit. Um, <laughs> what when you when you start one of these books? How much outlining do you do? Well, I think you know possibly you did this in your work as well. But I have a, a beginning and an end, mm -hmm. and some of what the middle plans to be is there. But there are always little twists and turns along the way. As you write, because I'm trying to be very um, relevant and and sticking with the saints' original history. So, for example, in mm -hmm. the Secret of the Shamrock, the um, the prose is, is related largely to Saint Patrick's Confessio, his own words about his story. Ah. So I really tried to basically make that story in modern modern day and then put a little red-headed twin into the middle of it, but stay true to the story as it actually happened in St. St. Patrick's own words. Do you find so. that difficult? It is, because sometimes there are things. So, for example, with St. Kateri, who was such a prayer warrior, but right. also had very stringent prayer practices, mm -hmm. to make it um, understandable for a, a young child yeah. um, to take the best parts of her life, but then also maybe shelter them from some things that might be challenging for younger children. Yeah. So we're not going to have a visit with St. Stephen. No, maybe not. <laughs> archery. They'll be in an archery <laughs> contest, and they are St. Stephen. No, Wee! although I do dream, dream someday about a Mother Angelica presence. Oh. And there is a book, in, a, a character in book number four, Angelica the Cat, oh. named her mother. <laughs> Aha, so you worked her in. In Claire's story. Ah. It was important to pay tribute to mother. And mm -hmm. I'd love to do a book on St. Teresa of Calcutta. Um, yeah. You know, so many modern saints that jump all the second would be an amazing story to tell. So. Yeah. 
Um, so, so there are many. I, I, I sense you're going to do more of these. I hope so. Will you please pray for me and, and to the kids out there too? I just ask for prayers of discernment about what God has planned for the series. Because with all my work, I, I never plan too far ahead. It's like we'll see what God has in mind. For what this. is your preference, writing for adults or kids? At this point, I'm in love with this kind of writing. I love mm -hmm. nonfiction, but I feel the need to space my adult nonfiction work a little bit. I don't want to just mm -hmm. write for the sake of writing. I want to really be at a point where I feel I have something to offer mm -hmm. my readers and more importantly, the church. So mm -hmm. I stagger those books a little bit because it's important to uh, to go back to the well and see what God has for me. Lisa so. Hendy, thank you for being here. Thank you, Raymond. Pleasure to see you. Lisa Hendy's Chime Travelers series is available at bookstores everywhere and online. <laughs>